Hello everybody, it's time once again for an unboxing or deck tech pre-release pool? Pre pre-release something? Breakdown? Pre-release pool breakdown. We're gonna call it a pre-release pool breakdown this time for Corset 2019. Uh, we are back at it again here on Gathering Information. We are going to start giving you more content, more things like deck techs and unboxings and this sort of thing. So, starting with the pre-release I went to this past weekend, in fact, uh, Saturday, there are lots of ways to play. Discover them online or at your local game store. Magic Arena, Friday Night Magic, magicthegathering.com. Cool. Um, so the, there's, there's no story-based stuff here. Building a pre-release deck. The way you construct your deck is thus. It's all nicely laid out. When you're in doubt, ask for advice. That's that's very simple. Very elegant. Very nice. All right. Let's get on to the pool. So, um, let's lay this all out, and then we'll go through it. Okay, so, I don't know if you can see because of the glare here, but, uh, let's try to, um... Uh, oh well. Um, so as you can see, this pool has a lot of red, but a lot of it is unplayable. There are very few creatures, and none of them are very good. Goblin Motivator I was excited about finding. It's the, um, one one that you can tap to give something haste. And, I mean, Trumpet Blast should be exciting if you've got little things. Spark Tongue Dragon I wanted to try out. Uh, I've got a Lightning Strike, a Shock, and a um, Electrify, which I did end up splashing. Ooh. Sorry about that. Uh, but there's just not much that's actually good. Sure, Strikes would be good, like, but really you want critical mass of creatures. By contrast, blue, I have very little of, but it's almost all gas. It's like, even Wind Mage is fine. The Frilled Sea Serpents in Seal, they're going to be good. Mirror Image, I think are, is good, again, in, in Limited, because you're going to have creatures. Two Omen Speakers, a Snapping Drake, a Switcheroo, Totally Lost an Uncomfortable Chill. That's just good stuff. Um, now, I did, of course, look at the fixing lance, which is, there's a blue-red and a green-white, and of course I looked at the um, multicolor uncommons. Enigma Drake is going to be fun if, if some of these spells are playable. Psychic Symbiote I really wanted to play. We'll see whether I got there. And Regal Bloodlord I also really wanted to play. So I looked for lifelink in white and black, and there's quite a bit of gain life. I even have two revitalizes. One is foil, but I didn't end up playing them. Um, you'll notice that something is missing from this pool so far, and that is the rares. So let's add that in and see if it changes anything. Cleansing Nova. Actually, let me just start with the promo. So the promo transmogrifying wand, I was uh, one of three people at my table to open this as their promo. <laughs> we were all kind of like, wah wah. It's okay, probably fine if like you've, you've got a bunch of flyers or big, bigger stuff, but I, I wasn't sure of it. Cleansing Nova, I kind of wanted to try. Um, a five mana wrath is better in sealed, like everything uh, slow but powerful is better than in sealed than it is in say draft, but um, uh, like when I built the white, 
it had mostly creatures, so you don't want to really run a Wrath in a creature deck. Um, Izareth was the one I was really excited about. Izareth the Awakener is one black black for a legendary creature, Human Wizard. She has a vulture on her head. She's a 3-3 three, three with Death Touch for 3, which is already, like, very good. And then when she attacks, you may pay X. If you do, return target creature with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield with a corpse counter on it. If that creature leaves the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. So, basically, you just... Everything uh, in your graveyard has on Earth, and that's phenomenal. I'm going to build a... Uh, a brawl deck around her most likely just I think there's some real value there um, runic armasaur I was also excited about it's a 2-5 for 3 and whenever an opponent activates an ability of a creature or land that isn't a mana ability you may draw a card I did end up with this in a deck at one point I guess I'll mention now I had played literally every color at this pre-release. The pool was deep enough that I swapped decks multiple times and had fun and experimented, and that's what I like to do at a pre-release, so yeah. I forgot to draw cards off of this twice. Urgh. Chaos Wand is the next one. Um, it's good, in sealed. Don't know about draft, probably not, but in sealed I will always run it. Everyone's running their removal, um, and it's slow enough that paying for and getting one of your opponent's removal spells out of their deck and casting it is good. It's just good. Excitingly, Crucible of Worlds. This is going to be expensive. It was basically unplayable in all limited formats. And Dragon's Horde. Wah, 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 wah. Three people at my table also had this, either as their promo or among their rares. It's fine, I guess. I maybe should have run it since I was splashing in um, in my decks, but I didn't really want to... Like, I'd rather play three off-color lands in most cases than a three-mana mana rock that I don't want to take the turn off for. In Sealed, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just good. But um, anyway, these were the rares... And they definitely did push me in directions, particularly Izareth, as well as the Gold Uncommon. So let's see what I ended up building. So my first deck was the uh, Black White, which uh, curved out pretty well, as it seems. I was splashing uh, red in all three of the decks. So I was splashing these three cards in all three of the decks. Um, I was running... Uh, seven, seven, and three, so awkward mana, but it's just, it was worth it to have the uh, lightning strike and electrify. And as you see, the curve here is really good from uh, small ground control to a surprising number of flyers, and uh, Izareth the Awakener is just fantastic. Um, especially when you only have to pay two to return like an Ajami's Pride Mate or something. Um, Regal Bloodlord. Eight removal right away. I never actually got um, one game. I got to make some one once. Uh, that was a long game stall. And I will say, the Chaos Wand in Sealed, phenomenal. Skeleton Archer is pretty good. Um, the Shock was hit or miss, and the Diamond Mare with the Aether Shield Artificer was um, was pretty good. I played this deck for two rounds, but I sided into the second deck in the second round because it worked better against that opponent. Um, so let's have a look at that one. So this one's deck two. Um, as you can see, it's quite different. Uh, the blue-green with the uh, splash... Actually, I'm forgetting a card because I was also running the Enigma Drake. So what was the cut here? I don't remember. Um, it's probably one of these Frilled Sea Serpents. I think I was only running one of them. Um, 
But yeah, the uh, the upside on this one was that my opponent was also running blue-green, I think with black instead of red, and uh, she had a lot of uh, very good... Oh no, it was it was Jund. She was playing Jund uh, because she had the Jund uh, dragon. Uh, she had a lot of big things in fight cards, so or punch cards, rather. Um, so the round was over before it really began. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't quite get there. Uh, my biggest mistake with this deck was not just plummeting her, the Jund Dragon, and then stealing Colossal Dread Maul with the Switcheroo, um, because she had her own plummet, and uh, that's basically what won her that game. Um, Shock, I found, I took out and replaced it with um, whatever I replaced it with. Maybe the um, the transmog wand at one point um, because it just wasn't it wasn't doing enough. Sure, you can hit your opponent in the face with it, but they my opponent seemed to always have one threes and things like that, or three threes, even even worse for shock. Um, so this one didn't have as much much success as I expected, but I didn't really get to draw many cards with it. So the, the rounds were over pretty quickly when I sided into this deck. Deck three, though, I ran for the remainder of the tournament, and I will set it up now. Deck three, as you can see, is kind of the best of both worlds. I've got the, um, the Isareth, I've got the Omen Speakers, I've got this Psychic Symbiont, which I wasn't splashing in any of the other builds, which is very good. The Frilled Sea Serpent is a big threat, um, which can be mirror imaged. So is the Psychic, psychic Symbiont. That happened several times. Switcheroo is good with an Omen Speaker. Uh, I also then got a Totally Lost and an Uncomfortable Chill because I just wanted to um, play as many instants and sorceries as possible for the Enigma Drake. Um, I did, during one round, uh, take out a shock again for the um, Infernal Scarring, which went both on an Omen Speaker at one point and a... Um, uh, that may have been... Oh, and a Skeleton Archer at another point. Uh, it just, against the uh, deck that had a lot of sorcery speed removal that I was playing in the um, third round, it was very good to suddenly be able to um, either get in uh, and make them trade and then draw a card and then get the Omen Speaker trigger again or just get the Omen Speaker trigger again because long games that helps. Um, I just found Shock wasn't really doing it in sealed. Duress was awesome. Um, the Chaos Wand in sealed is fantastic. I don't think it's fast enough for draft, but in, in sealed I would absolutely run it again. So this one ended up winning a match no problem and then losing a match in three, and they were very long and interesting games. So in the end I went four and four, or sorry, two and two, because it was a smaller pre-release. And uh, that ended up getting me a pack of... Well, uh, it got me three packs, but I'm cracking one here right now. So let's actually just clear this all away. And uh, let's crack us a pack, shall we? Okay. Can we see that? Knight's Pledge. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two. Meh. Anticipate is okay. I got one of these off of the, um, the wand, the Chaos Wand. In one game, I got Anticipate, Divination, um, and uh, Electrify. Was it Electrify? And that felt amazing. I also got, like, three... Um, liches caresses in one game. It, so, yeah, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about for sealed. Onaki Ogre is a 4-2 for 3. Sure, whatever. 
Infectious Horror. Whenever it attacks, each opponent loses two life. I would probably play this. Uh, I used to love it when I played Kitchen Table back in M13 days. Giant Spider, perfectly good. Wall of Vines, perfectly mediocre. Spark Tongue Dragon. I am not sure what to think of this card yet. It's expensive, but maybe you just don't wait to uh, have the three extra to pay. Vampire Neonate. I played against a deck that had two of these, and uh, that was kind of his win condition. It did not go well for him. Star Crown Stag. He also had one of this, these, and that did go very well for him. This is an excellent card. Probably the first pick from this pack so far. Rogue's Gloves. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Meh. Vigilant Bailoth. 5-5 uh, five, five for 5 with Vigilance. Yeah, yeah, I'd play that. Absolutely play that. Gravedigger. This is probably the card I'd pick first from... The, well, I don't know. I don't know, the Star Crown Stag is pretty good, but Gravedigger is also pretty good, so I guess we'll find out. And, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, and there's a foil in this, too. Chromium the Mutable. I am... I am going to build a deck, that's for sure. Chromium the Mutable is a four white, blue, black legendary creature Elder Dragon with Flash that can't be countered, and flying. He's a 7-7, seven, seven, and you can discard a card to make him a human with base power and toughness 1-1, one, one, uh, gaining hexproof, and can't be blocked. So, it's funky for sure. And then our foil is a Gearsmith Prodigy. Gets plus 1, plus 0 oh, as long as you control an artifact. So, <laughs> interesting. It's kind of another nerd ape. Anyway, that was uh, my story of the pre-release. Uh, be sure to check out um, the Knowledge Pool this week for more stories of the pre-release. All three of us, Tams, Laura, and I were there. In fact, Laura went to two of them. So there will be stories. There will be more deck breakdowns. There'll be another Crack-A-Pack. And uh, join us for that uh, when it comes out this week. Also... Check out the vault, because we're going to be talking about M19 on uh, Magic Arena in the vault podcast, so please check that out. Links for everything are in the description down below. Thanks for joining me today for this unboxing, I guess, uh, and hope to see you again soon.